Hi, this is Paula Gloria, and this show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. We're very lucky today to be able to speak to a very early researcher on 9-11, and he has a lot to tell us. Um, so welcome, Rick, to the show. It's Rick Siegel. Okay. I'm Rick Siegel from the 9-11 Eyewitness and actually I'm here uh, today to try and clear up some of the misconceptions and fallacies surrounding the problems with 9-11 mysteries and Sophia Shopquat or Sophia Smallstorm or just plain Sophia from 9-11 mysteries and um, Shall we and thank you yes oh yeah thanks for joining us you're you're calling in from another part of the world so uh, yeah welcome actually, to the show yes. And I thank you because uh, at first you were, I think, Paula, you were when the reason I even uh, came on the show with you was because when we were on an email list together with some pretty horrible people, uh, you had uh, immediately taken what has been passed around by the 9-11 truth people uh, with Sophia and me and, and the problems and people think it's only a copyright issue and that's why, and plus you also used something where you taped uh, something in San Francisco and and you weren't allowed to use that either and and, and I thought you're, you're bunching it all up and you didn't know any of the facts and I got pissed but you opened the door and I said that, okay I, I would be remiss in not coming and talking to you about it. Well I, I really want to thank you for that because the whole copyright issue is very complex. I had another person on YouTube where we had a misunderstanding that's 9-11 Shaman and it turns out he was the actual screenplay writer for what became Gangs of New York. It was taken from him when he was a student at Hunter College. Then also Carl Pearson, has uh, he's a copyright attorney, civil rights and so on. He showed me the other side of the complexities of, of copyright. So I think the important thing is that the authentic message gets to people. So um, I guess without further ado, can we just go through this first one that you that you sent? Because I can roll it in, and it's in its. Totality. Sure, roll it in, and because uh, it'll get me into what she's saying and what's happening okay. on it, and Great. I can talk about. It. Well, you know, when you make films, there is something that's actually very important called sound design, sound effects, sound engineering. I'm going to pause it here. Rick Siegel had his portable radio along to listen to the news as it happened. All the people on the pier that day were listening to that 101, no, 1010 winds broadcast from his radio. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that, Rick? Yeah, well, that's that's basically it. And uh, there I was, uh, even when I first started there, I'm rolling tape. I'm a television guy. I'm from online TV. I did all the Viacom staging in New York City. I'm watching this, and it's two smoking buildings. It's the most boring thing. What are you doing? You're going to film two smoking buildings. I set up my tripod. The only thing I can give, what am I, I can't do a commentary. There's two smoking buildings. We're watching two. And so that's why, build, you, that's why you had your, your radio on. Well, I had the radio because I knew that that was where I'm going to get the news. And whether I would have turned it off and done a narrative even was a matter of my choice because I went, well, what better? I'll just leave the radio playing. At least there's some historical stuff being t thrown on the tape. And and I watched with my binoculars, you know. And I, okay. Would, no one would have imagined what right. had happened that day. So you're just taping a couple smoking buildings. thought the fires would be out in another hour or two and might have these boring smoking videos, but at least it's like the Inverberg burning or something, you know? No, I think that's really, really valuable that you had the, the, the radio going on at the same time because as I talked to m and producers here, one fellow was telling me that he was listening in his bathtub as mm -hmm. they were talking about the helicopters, so it seemed as though before any supposed airplanes hit buildings, um, they were prepping the audience for it, you know, they were making announcements that this was going to be happening. So I thought that was interesting, that he's in his bathtub. It, it, the more records that you can have moment by moment, the better. But mm -hmm. let's, let's carry on. Um, and this was prevalent throughout the 9-11 Eyewitness video, which Rick did not make. Now, he, she said you didn't make this. What's that mean? No, no, you see, like, here she's trying to confuse you or obscure what she's actually done. It's like she's saying that I didn't make 9-11, I witnessed the DVD, that I didn't manufacture it, produce it, and I didn't do the, the you I know, see. like all the, the filler stuff and the... I 
I do this research. He, his, his research that he did on he's using my foot. I see. Okay. okay. But she's trying to relate that with I didn't shoot that stuff on the pier that day because now she can lay the groundwork for what she's done to this stuff that she's used in her film as evidence of explosions and thermite. Okay. Not to confuse you that it could be both, but she's used to the, my stuff as evidence of both and says, as you go listen to what she has to say, go ahead. Which we cannot make. Um, the decision to include a long and ongoing broadcast from WINS, a news broadcast, I'm sure people remember that. That broadcast is repeated throughout the video and it is apparently a kind of backdrop I just want to pause that because the words are going by quickly. Why does 9-11 Truth want to destroy real evidence in support of Hollywood fantasy fictions? Sound design, another word for fraud. So, so there you go on that one. Right, yeah. It, it continues on another, another one of those cuts because each one has a... I'm trying to make different points, plus on YouTube you know it's better to have a few different things make short points. And you can't bore people by going on, on and on and okay, on. Okay, that's 9-11 Mysteries version part two, Deception. So now let's go to 9-11 Mysteries. Shafquat calls 1010 wins a friend. Fraud? Uh, fraud. Yeah, and that's this is what, what she's talking about, this tape. You know that, that I didn't record it. And here it is in the background playing. And, and it's an, you'll hear it. It's an insertion. Very little like sound ridiculous. design. But we did add a... We did substitute for Rick Siegel's droning, and I won't say this is Rick Siegel, this is not his choice, but the person who made the video for him, the droning radio broadcast. Because in the context of our movie, our listeners and viewers would have gone, what? Why are we listening to that radio? What's that all about? In the context of Eyewitness, it is the background sound throughout the movie. And there happens to be a male screaming in 9-11 Eyewitness when the towers fell. And I, when I was watching Eyewitness, I heard this scream many, many, many times throughout the movie. And I was wondering why it was there. I don't believe that man screamed six or seven times, but it was in there. It was all over the movie. So that's sound design, and that's something that's a distraction. So we put in these two little effects so that the whole thing would feel like you were on the dock watching. Okay. Now, now you're really on the dock watching. Oh, okay. I'm going to read this. Rick Siegel knows the lies Sophie and 9-11 mysteries are spreading. All he can do is let you know you have to deal with it. So let's go. So Rick, what was sound design? But we did add. So what was that last part? We were we zoomed into. Uh, well, that's it's like um, it's me being visual. It's like she had said that she's trying to say that basically everything that was on the tape wasn't there in its sound design, and she wanted to give an effect of being on the pier, but she's never been on that pier, and she wasn't there that day, and I was, and not only was I there, I lived there, so I took it and showed you, here's the pier, you want to be there? This is what it's like when it was really there. And that was an evening on the pier, you know, going along on a boat with a blues cruise, and uh, it's another tape I made. So, And I own all the copyrights, so I can do whatever I want with my Okay, tape. so Rick, you were, you were in Hoboken on the pier looking over? Yeah, yeah, because so I lived there. I lived on Fifth Street, which is... So One she, block from that. So point. she, so she's saying there was the same scream four or five times that she was implying that you were doing sound design. Exactly, and that the that the uh, and she's she's saying that she's not implying it's so polite. She stated that it's sound design and that the screaming was sound design, and she can't believe it was screaming. I mean, that was a big obfuscation. Obs and uh, she claims that the radios, she said that droning radio, it's like, and that that's sound design. 
that something that was inserted again she stated that it's something that was inserted by the people at Blue Star who made the DVD they inserted that over my video and that's why it states on the on those little video that at least they kept to what was on the tape and they didn't destroy what was there to change it to do something else other than to comment on what was happening so and she did a lot more than that so let's go on to the next one. It says, this is the first in several videos showing lies, frauds, and distortions pushed for 9-11 truth by 9-11 Mysteries producers. Mm -hmm. So let's get this. Uh, here Sophie gives us a clip with inserted explosions, sirens, and complete with police radio calls in the background. Nice radio calls. She doesn't even say where she gets those from. Then the explosions, where they come from. I can't hear much. Yeah, it's tough to hear. Here, I'll turn it up. Wow, serious lies supported by David Ray Griffin, James Fetzer, Stephen Jones. But let's look again at mm -hmm. the best we have. None of those signs. Now let's look at the original. I thought originals were the best we have. <laughs> Here Sophie gives us a clip with inserted explosions, sirens, and complete with police radio. Only the video is real. The sound is all imagination, fraud, and 9-11 truth agenda. But uh, even that video, I wasn't... Uh uh, it, it, even that video isn't real because she somehow got erased the helicopter that went across it. It only comes out at the very, very end, and somehow she got it all gone. Right, I see that. Like, again, a lot of times, no one, it's like, I don't understand what she's, why they're doing it. You know, why would you erase the helicopter? And it, it, but they, you know, Alex Jones made a big deal out of the helicopters. Bruce, everyone makes a big deal out of the helicopters, and if somebody's erasing it, what, what, what are you erasing that from the tape? And now people actually come in on, on forums like, like Phil Jayen is pushing that Sophia has the real one, and I'm pushing a fake. Now you see what they're trying to push. What are they trying to push, Rick? They tried to make, see, they wanted, they need Sophia to be up there. They wanted her to be the queen of 9-11, uh, 9-11, uh, media. So even they had, um, they had, um, Dylan Avery come on and say his, uh, onto the, uh, onto Wick's show. And he said his, his film's full of errors and was full of, and basically mine is full of shit. And you should really just watch Sophia's 9-11 mysteries. And it oh, shocked me. I wrote a big article about it. How the hell does he do this? Like, what was that? But they started together. So they started in August of, or July or August of 2005. And they started with um, Huffschmidt. And Huffschmidt's a big uh, uh, Zionist pusher, anti-Zionist or whatever. You know, he's Jew hater, Jew baiter crap. So, and he was in the original one. I don't know if you knew that or remembered that. And he was in the original one and they tried to Sophia uh, out as uh, Sophia Smallstorm, who was supposed to be an Indian here, American Indian, who um, was doing all this great patriotic stuff for America. And, oh, it sounded all really great. I never got to see any of these films because I'm not in the country. Uh, and then, um, so, excuse me, Rick, can you uh, can you yeah. slow down a little bit for me because you know with these vicious emails going on back and forth. I have been mm -hmm. abused in every possible way, you know, being a Nazi, Zionist, shill, you know, the, the whole mm -hmm. works. Oh, oh, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, so with Hofschmidt, I don't really know very much about him, I, but, but I did look at something someone sent me. It was actually from a rabbi in Colorado to look at one-third of the Holocaust.com. And that was mm -hmm. the first time that I'd ever considered that because Nico Haupt, people think that because I used to hang out with Nico Haupt, that he'd tell me things. He'd never say anything, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and he was always, um, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's like 
the 9-11 no planes is sort of an exquisite piece of knowledge that that you have to have the right time to understand <laughs> okay. do, do you know what I'm saying and I would even watch him not to want to say screw up the chance to uh, to meet a, a, a nice young lady by by heaping that on her and yet fault me for for not wanting to to lay it on three million people if I had a chance on Howard Stern and my concern <laughs> is, my concern is that did that already <laughs> well that well see the thing is that yeah then as soon as you go on Howard Stern then they say see you're a Zionist shill you know so it's uh -huh. so so what you're telling me is that Hofschmidt was questioning the Holocaust, which I don't think is a bad thing to do. I think we should question everything. But he was too controversial because of this, and then they decided an American... Ind he's pushing something wrong. What was wrong about Hofschmidt's 9-11 analysis? Let's put it that way. I don't know if there's much wrong with his analysis, except he gets real paranoid about that everybody's a Jew and they're all out to get him. Okay. So okay. other than that, his analysis is pretty good because I read some of his stuff. His analysis about me, of course, is completely absurd. But because you're his, Jewish, his, right? <laughs> because you're yeah, yeah. He immediately, it's like, oh my God, it's you're Jewish. Obviously, it's like it's I, obvious. <laughs> I know that that that's so horrible because they, they did the same thing. You know, the Concordia Foundation. They were saying because I was putting my uh, processing my contributions by credit card through bit by bit. And Bruce Steinfeld owns it, and thank God Bruce Steinfeld kept my site going while I was in India, and and you know I wanted to do a family-run business, and he's the brother of my old boyfriend, and and they make this this huge story out of it, so I can very much sympathize. But well, they make stuff out of me. They don't. I don't have anything to go with, so they make it up as they go along. Man, I've got some great one. I read the stories. If I could just be these people, I, you know, it would have been so cool. But I'm not. So. But, anyway. but 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 with Sophia, you're saying she just what's the problem with her? Well, I know she doesn't believe in no planes. Is that it? With her, no, no, no. With her, well, okay. She started with this. It's like I don't know what the agenda is. This Sophia's a Pakistani. Did you know that? Well, I don't have a problem. I've almost been to Pakistan. I was in Kashmir. I mean, people are people. You, remember, you were almost in Pakistan. No, I like, remember this. You're born in Pakistan. You're a Pakistani woman. What kind of life you lead? Well, I know Pakistanis. I mean, I'm okay. here in New exactly York. Exactly. So, and and what happens? And when they come over, what kind of people do they turn into? Well, they're now, her her brother happens to be a very big official at the Pakistani bank, the one that paid the money out to the terrorists. You so can look it up on Google. Just Google Shafquat, you know, and you'll see he's like head of the big bank. Yeah. But which which terrorists are you talking about? The the hijacked planes? The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought there weren't any. Hey, I don't know what there is with that. Like I said, yeah, that's my only problem is I was sleeping and got woke up by the first explosion. And uh, I didn't know what it was. Turned on the radio and they said a small aircraft had hit the thing, hit the building. And you... You live in New York. You know if a small plane's going to hit one of those buildings, even those big ones, it's like it's going to sit there dangling out and smoking. I had enough time to go get my stuff together and get out to shoot it. And uh, I heard the second explosion, and and then they started saying other stuff. So I got out faster, and so I have no idea what what there is. And, and I don't believe anything until I see it. And all the stuff on TV fakery, everything that you see is all fake because it's all bullshit. This is this is what my whole thing is. Is it, they're all using bullshit. They're using copies of copies of compressed files that have been compressed already. No one's gone to get the originals. That's the most important thing. In the, is that you had an original. Like, how do you know this was played on this? And how do you know who recorded it? How do you know the distortion and the coloration isn't because of somebody's stupid recorder has a dirty head? It's like they don't even know what they're dealing with. So. It's like until you got somebody with the original and the person that stands by it, you still don't have shit. So, so they, but we yeah. can we can get the originals, right? They they have no. Them. We've actually ordered some, and that stuff isn't even in there. Well, so again, it's like it but, gives more to no planes, but it still doesn't do anything. The only person I know has gotten the one, uh, like the dive bombing one, is the is uh, Dylan Avery, and Dylan just bowed completely out of 9/11. Dylan had the money and he got all the originals, so he's the only one who got to actually see those. I never saw nothing about planes. 
I know that what I see is fake, but they used to send me stuff. I mean, people still send me all kinds of weird videos that have, you can know they've been touched up. You know this stuff didn't happen. They got smudges going across and say, what's this? Is this a rocket? I go, no, somebody took something and did a smudge pen on a goddamn video and oh, you're bothering me. So, so you're saying, Rick, that that one of total penetration where the airplane comes in one side and goes out the other was just added on? It was never broadcast live? I never saw it. And because, again, I was... Uh, I was in the bathroom, and then I was on my way out. So I don't know what was broadcast live. Oh, the, all the stuff I saw was later on in the afternoon when we were all sitting completely in shock watching the tube and trying to figure out what the hell we Even me, I just saw what the buildings go down. I still couldn't believe what I saw. I d described those buildings going down like a Roman candle. A Roman candle doesn't fall down. It explodes upward. Those buildings were bubbling out of the top. That's all I know. Right. And, and I know... It and, and it just was, the, and my video shows it. It shows it all, like, bubbling up out of the top. The stuff's, it's right. the most amazing, it's unreal. And I, I'm, I'm lucky. I have the actual video. I can go and look. I can make sure what I say I saw. I really have the tape for it, except Sophia's changed it now. So it's like the person screaming on the pier is a lie because it was sound designed to her. And the truth is what she's trying to put out. And that's what the best they have. So now I get a real problem because I asked Sophia. It's like, here, let's go back to this. I go to Sophia and I, I, in October when I saw my videos in her thing all over the place and she's saying it's me. I go, where did you get the rights for this? You know, why didn't you, you know, ask and tell me this? And she goes, oh, I got the permissions from your partners. I don't have partners. I have somebody I licensed my video to who's making a DVD he's supposed to pay me a royalty. I think you understand how that works or do I have to explain that? It's like I have no part in their actual production. I only have my video I shot and they're making this, the stuff and they got to stay true to it and that's part of our contract. So they took their, it's like going and parking your car, going to the film and coming back and somebody took your car because the parking attendant said it's here take it it's yours you know so that's what she did but uh, now it's only uh, October 26 only two weeks after she releases her video and that I've seen it and I told her I got a problem with it and then I say look you can't use it unless you get some kind of license do something I still hadn't known the changes I didn't look at the details understand I'm just seeing like my videos in there so she immediately sticks a lawyer on me who says, we got the rights. You go to, the, if you get a lawyer and sue us, then you can see if you can prove you don't, we don't have it. We have a piece of paper. So I'm asking Blue Star. They say, no, we didn't give them anything. They have no piece of paper. She asked us once for some little part of, she asked them once for a little part of the pyroclastic flow, which wouldn't have anything to do with me because it's other stuff that they got that they put in. It's like not everything in 9-11 Eyewitness was just my tape. It was also other stuff. So when they have the rights to that. They can do what they want with it. I don't have any rights to it. So she's done some funky things here. So in the meantime, instead of coming clean or calling up or answering my emails, she sends a lawyer. And I'm not interested because if you don't understand that you can't win in a court on something like that on a copyright case, and you've never been through them, and they're just not worth it. So I forget about it until I start seeing somebody, actually the Blue Star people, show me the some of the errors. Then I looked at them all, and I'm like, wow. And she's got my name all, all over it. She says in the actual film, this is what Rick Siegel shot that day, and it isn't what I shot. So it's she's using it as an evidence, using my name, and she's using my video and my... It's my authority now that this is the real thing. She has something real, whereas she doesn't. Even when you say you got this from NBC and it's stolen from YouTube, you don't know that you got something from NBC. It could have gone through some idiot's hands who flaked it all off, and now you're using it as um, proof. Do you, un do you understand what I'm saying here? You, you didn't get the original. You can't use it in your in your stuff if you, you took it from YouTube or from one of those share services. You don't know what you got. It's this is bogus. It's not real. It's no, I, I, Rick. I hear what you're saying. I have a friend. Uh, I think he's 
he had a VCR running in uh, Virginia, so he's going to be looking through his, uh, you know, his stacks of storage stuff. He's not but, particularly... But even when he pulls it out, his stuff is going to be done on a VHS tape, yeah. which, is hor which is horrible if you start to look at pixels. No, it's a beginning. <laughs> And, and I trust him. I trust him that, that I'm going to know at least what went down to Virginia. At least for me. It'll work for me. You right. Know, but watch out when you start looking at pixels. Cause I'm not, you I know remember, what? I'm not going to look. They, they, showed me, they showed me how the, when that plane was going in, they showed, they wanted to say it was fake because the pixels wrapped around the edge of the building. And it, I looked at my tapes, and that's all of them do that. It's like when they go, when the helicopter goes by the cloud, and I'm looking at original digital footage, it's wrapping the pixel around the cloud because it's really having problems to determine which pixel to light up while it, just on the edges of those clouds. And I went, whoa. And when you've got a tiny helicopter against a cloud and the pixels are breaking up, it's it can get pretty strange. It also... I put up one of my videos, and somebody said, "Wow, there's a there's a rocket going on, launched over from this building," and I had to go to the original. It wasn't a rocket; it was a bird. It was a it was a white seagull going across. So it looked like a white streak when it came out on the video on YouTube. So it's like now people are freaking. I found that oh, no, it's not. <laughs> like now they got a rocket going out of this building, but it's not. It's a bird. So. You gotta have the originals. It's so important to have the originals. She didn't even have them. That's why she's telling, she's making statements about what this, what's happening on that pier without ever being there and telling me I'm a liar and telling 1010 wins that they, they aren't, they weren't played that day and it's just this ridiculous and her is the best 9-11 has to offer as evidence. So why are the 9-11 organizations using this as evidence and trying to subdue the only real piece of evidence they've ever really gotten, which is my tape, doesn't have to be me. I'm not interested in, in going there because I'm not a great researcher. I'm not the longest. I think more uh, that that belongs to Nico or, or, or Web Ferry or someone else. But there were people like, remember, I was on the board of directors with uh, Fetzer. And and all and Barrett and all these strange people and if you if you maybe you want to cover this on your next show but the the stuff that these people did there's just no way that they're not trying to destroy the whole thing did you notice that the original scholar sites are all destroyed they're gone now there's nothing there they took down even that stupid sharing page you let the whole thing destroy it was a, a seven ranked page on Google. And it was getting, it was um, ranked up in the over 100,000 on the Alexa. So it, it had all the stuff going for it, and they Rick, split we're gonna it have up. To, let, we're going to have to go on to the next show. So this has been uh, Paula Gloria with Rick Siegel, and okay. this is an episode of Farther Down the Rabbit Hole, and we're considering some of the fakery of TV fakery. Stay tuned for part two with Rick Siegel explaining this. Thanks a lot. Okay, so let's start the new show, and you can, you can pick up on that. Uh, do, what I have are two ones left that we hadn't gone through. That's the one, 9-11 Mysteries updated into Fetzer interview, and then 9-11 Mysteries new cut, Mysteries solved. Which do you want me to start with to explain that point? Which one was I on? Which point? Now I'm confused. Um, okay. You were talking about Jim Fetzer and how the, the page and the Google and stuff like that. Maybe recap. Ah, uh, then do the Fetzer one first. Okay, let's let's, let's roll Fetzer. let's roll that. I'll put the sound on and then you can explain. All right. I'll bring that back. And here we go. Um. So when you make a movie, if what you're showing is. I just want to read it because there's a, there's a lot of words here, uh, Rick, that go by quick. Sophia recently boasted on Jim Fetzer's radio show that she is free to do whatever she wants with 9-11 EW content. What's EW mean? Eyewitness. Eyewitness content, okay. Because the original audio was sound design and a distraction that needed to be removed. Evidentiary, our rule was don't add any sound design. If it's just Filler, footage, B-roll, introductory, any of that, then it's okay. This indicates that authentic audio evidence of explosions recorded before the towers fell cannot be used in a court of law to convict the criminals responsible for 9-11. Wow. To augment the feel of the thing by putting in some sound design. You can look... So it says that their intent on destroying real evidence... Okay, to augment... 
the feel of the thing by putting in some sound design. You can look. Wow, that's pretty heavy, Rick. Can you comment? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's basically what happened. Remember, it's the last time I did anything was uh, two years ago, and just before that radio interview. After that, they wouldn't have me anywhere. Wouldn't let me speak anywhere. They, if you talk about me on any of the forums, they ban you forever. Uh, mm -hmm. 9 11 flogger won't, won't let anyone talk about that. It's like there's nothing, and then they'll all defend her to the bone. Um, so, when you make. Wow. Well, so what, what do you suppose is going on? Well, they don't like the message I bring, and they don't like that tape. What's on, see, that's another thing, Paula. I don't really know what's on that tape that's so disturbing, but they don't want it out there. And they don't want it out there being authentic. So they take the movement. Remember, the movement's being led by its leaders. These are the leaders. So they want the movement led over and away from him, away from this. Now, the last thing I gave was a message was in Los Angeles at the, at the Alex Jones thing, and it was to go to Washington and, and, by masses be able to overwhelm the place. Just millions of people just go there and you walk in and you take the place over. No one has to fire a shot. The people take it. It's like by millions of people, they cannot do anything. Hundreds of thousands of them walk into every every police precinct and give themselves up right away and keep them so busy. There's nothing they can do. There's no place they can put millions of people. So and I got the whole place on so an uproar and no one really liked that and they just said you can't do that and if you don't come to New York if you come to New York, we'll buy 5,000 DVDs. If you don't come, you'll never sell another one. Well, I just, didn't just care. a second. Like, Rick, you're going too fast for my mind to comprehend. You, uh -huh. you, are, you are saying that that day you shot about, what, two hours of, bore, of footage that was boring because you thought eventually the fires would just go out and you'd go well, home. The whole thing was 58 minutes. 58 minutes, okay. So right. you... So you had the radio running, and, and probably they looped the broadcast, right? So she's saying it's boring to take it out? No, they didn't loop any of the uh, radio. The radio oh, really? was absolutely amazing. The radio itself is a complete timeline history with time-coded, with the beeps. This is 1010 wins, you wow. know, reporting that day. This is amazing audio, and just that alone... There's like people talking about Building 7 going down, an actual interview of a guy who talked about how the building shuttered and exploded out and then came down. I mean, and they don't want that out anywhere. I put that up, it comes down. Hang on, it's but just like, a second. So, so, Rick, so you've got this 58 minutes, but because you're working for a job just like a scientist, you don't get the patent, the company you're working for has the copyright, right? So you don't no, have... No, I, I got my copyrights. So I mean, I can take, I got the papers ready. I'm done with my papers. I own the copyright, and it's it's not just copyright, it's also Lanham. You see, you can't change the, the, the real crime that she committed and that, that has to be pursued isn't that copyright. That's why it isn't the biggest issue, although I'll explain some of that to you, too. But the real crime is that she changed it, still used my name on it, and said it was mine. So you're creating a lie and saying it's Rick Siegel's. So, and Rick, that I, yes. so Rick, can't, can't we sort of figure out what they want to distract us from by seeing what, what was changed? Like you say, helicopters, you're not sure why, but it seems they're annoying. Exactly. Helico yeah, and the helicopter pilot, I, I even tried to get a hold of him. He's dead. Ooh. We, we finally found out who it was. The only one who has tapes of the inside of that helicopter was on Israeli well, news. You know, when you make films, there is something that's actually... I'm trying to find the, the helicopter shot so we can... That, that was in that first video. Yeah. I'm going to put pull where, that down. Where I compare, not, maybe it wasn't the first one, maybe it was the... It's where I'm comparing the two she, that she's showing, the building coming down and explosions, and it's the sound, and she erased the helicopter. So, and the helicopter is amazing, and we, I know who it is and where it came in, and I, I found a whole thing. I should have sent you that link, too, because uh, I don't know. It's like it would take a lot of work to figure out what they're trying to hide. It's, I mean, they've been trying to wake people up that they're all trying to hide. As you find when you go down to the church, how they manipulate things around and lead them on into the places where there's not going to be any more resistance and... and um, into futile efforts of petitions and stuff like that instead yeah. of a, an actual radical change. 
which I'm hoping the financial stuff should actually boost. It's when you get the people in the streets, 42% of the people in the streets, you will see a change happen. Until then, the people are sort of gobbling it up because they're still in their houses. The government's going to print up billions of dollars and, <laughs> and give it to the bankers so that they can have their profits. <laughs> That's like, great. Wow. Uh, where the hell they come up with this stuff and then Americans can sell? Anyway, we're, we're going to finish this stuff up and go into financials, right? Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, uh, so, so, if you, so the big thing is that people want to confuse this with just that copyright issue, which is also a very big one because you once talked about filming um, in the uh, in, in San Francisco Park a hair a hair uh, uh, performance and oh, that you wanted to, yes. to do something with it. Yes, yes, yes. And, it, it and wasn't hair. It was it wasn't San Francisco. It was right here, uh, Shakespeare in the Park. And it was ah, so cool. it was so beautiful, and it, and it wasn't really the performance. It was the whole ambiance of being outside on a summer's night, and it was just yeah, it's great. And it's I was great careful. Too. I wasn't interested in 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 copying the performance. It was it was the audience. It was it was just it was New York that night. It was just so. So cool. where did you get the? So it depends on what you're planning to do with this stuff and how you're planning to present it, how how your copyright. But oh, you know no. they had no, 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 they no, have they, their performance. No, they, they own the performance. Yeah, they own the performance. I don't know if they own the theater, or whatever. But they sent me such a mm -hmm. such terrifying emails. I was just sort of. Well, where did you put it? Did you put it up on YouTube? No, I didn't. They only got wind that I had it. They saw that I had a camera. And somebody asked, oh, where are you putting it? And I said, public access. They were all nice and friendly, so they took down my info. I didn't know that this was happening. And the next day, I get this really intense email in my, in my, in my inbox. And, yeah. and, I, and I loved it. I was going to paste it and sort of put it with other stuff to show me and Molly waiting in line to give my viewers a, an idea of what it's like to take advantage of something that corporate America and New York is making available for the people because it's free. You just have mm -hmm. to wait, wait in line, and right. that's all I wanted to. I, you know, I forgot about that, but I'm glad you picked up on it because yeah. I would have done a beautiful show because it. it yeah, but you should. What you should have done is is do your cut, you know, and show, and then send it to them and ask them for your rights and say, listen, I want to do this in the show. Yeah, maybe. Will you let Will you let me do it? And they and it, if you're not showing their show and you're doing what you just said you're planning to do. They would have no problem, and you'd almost be able to do that, except you didn't get that permission. And you could ask, and they're a very big company, and you should be doing that because they can be scary. They, they don't have to hire an attorney. One works there all the time. So, okay. So, and, and it's bad for people like me. See, that's why copyrights are so important, because it doesn't really protect real artists, the guys on the streets who really do the art, and everything's stolen from them, and they make nothing. It's like the poor bands are being suckered into giving away all their material because so much is getting stolen from big bands, but they're not making any money. So they'll never go anywhere, and it keeps the big companies in business. So it, it's, a, it's a pitfall to think that you shouldn't allow the copyrights. It's like it's for those people, not for, but it's, it's just all abused. You've got to understand it's being abused, and we can get into that into the financial part of it. So, because that, that's part of the abuse too. Where Where do you want to go now? What What is your thoughts? I mean, like like Sophia, what is she? What is her objective? I mean, the whole idea with. Well, know, who would know? It's like that's the thing. It's like uh, I would put any normal human being in any of this situation, uh, and I'm sending an email and saying I don't even know that you got the permissions, and you're telling me no, yeah, I got them and this. Then I'm saying, look, you changed the video, and like you can't do that. No, I'll go get a lawyer and talk to me. So I get a lawyer, and the lawyer tells, no, we're going to keep it in there. Now wait, and here's the other point. I was telling you about uh, Huffschmidt. Huffschmidt was in that first edition, but Huffschmidt was taken out in the January uh, edition, and mine was supposed to be taken out too. She was making a new cut, and I said, take my stuff out too, uh, because you don't have permission. Well, she left it in. And she took him out because the 9-11 Truth people said, if you got Hushmid in, we can't push your DVD. So she took him out. So in the part that's all out, that new cut, is the one without her, but she, without him, but she didn't take out my stuff. And, of course, then I found out what she had done to it and got really pissed. Then I, then I couldn't stand back because she's calling me a liar. She's saying, my stuff is bogus. If I let that go out, then I'm... It's like you always want your whistleblower. You keep saying you want somebody to stand up and say, well, this is fake. Well, I'm telling you, this is fake. It's too bad it's 
it's 9-11 truth, but like you got fake stuff and your people are fake. And then they tried, they kept trying to quiet me down by bringing me in and giving me position. But all I got was seeing more of their fakeness and, and more of this political, political uh, pushing of buttons to try and make you do something for the cause, you know. But the cause is truth and that so lying for truth doesn't work. <laughs> lying for truth. Yeah, well, that's Fetzer's thing. Even if it was true, I'm not going to say it. That's Fetzer. That's his line. He said that, and we're, we have a thing we call Fetzer when we're on the board. Nobody could be this stupid and still claim he's professor. He just did stuff that's, be, and it's only because they have to do this because they were trying to ruin the, the, all these these. <laughs> Uh, and oh, just, just, like, yeah. just, just, just to let you take a breath on that, because because right. this is very intense, uh, a very intense situation. Mm -hmm. Jim Fetzer was saying, even if it's truth, I'm not going to say it. Oh yeah, many times. I mean, okay. we had him. Okay. okay, here's it, one. Because that was yes. Here's one possible justification. Um, what if you think it would shatter people if you haven't really prepared for them in other ways? Like, like I, I think he was going to be on WBAI, and he'd said he wanted Paula to call in. It's a little tough when you have to be the one that's carrying the no planes. It, I mean, you don't mind being the one talking truth, but it's sure kind of crummy when you don't have people. Coming yeah, Paula, if you're talking you. about yourself, you should never let your. You should have gone on and take talked about what you needed to talk about, not what he's trying to pull out, because. See, the same, like, I'm not going to talk about no planes. I can talk about some of the video fakery, but since I, I have no clue, I wasn't there, I didn't see Diddly Squad, I live in New York, I don't know anyone who did. did you, I think you, did you live in New York at the time? No, no, I didn't, but you're saying you don't know anyone in New York who saw, no who saw planes? No one, and I was big there, I knew thousands of people, and no one, no one. Everyone was either in their apartment or ran away, and... No, I don't know anyone who saw him, and I actually know that artist guy who claims he saw the planes, and he's an artist freak, the one who who they think, again, is TV faker guy. Chris, remember, I was an artist in the art crowd, and I know all these people, so right. it's like I know say, the actors, I know... Say, this. Rick, Rick, since you know all the crowd, I went over to Brooklyn to check out that photo that was done by, uh, of, of what Rosalie feels is Edna, the lady waving from the hole. Oh, ah, okay. And, and, and it turns out it was because he was a friend of a friend of mine. So my mm -hmm. friend, you know, I was a little nervous about doing it because it's just so heavy. You know, mm -hmm. there's that, that's the photo in the NIST report. And, right. and you see that the hole is empty. And so I was kind of nervous about going over there. And, and I said, you know, some people think this is a fake photo. And he was totally offended. And I went over there, and when I went over there, he showed me the proof sheet, and then he put it on the computer, and he blew it up and blew it up, and you could see all of the detail, and you could peer into the hole. And there wasn't a shred of evidence of an airplane, but as soon as I suggested there was no airplane, he just freaks out, and he grabs the NIST report, and he goes, I believe in science, I believe in science. And, 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 oh, it's very safe, isn't and, it? And he believes that there's an airplane that he can't even see, that he was so proudly exploding. He believes that the airplane sort of tightly went in there at a cookie-cutter hole and then did its business inside. I mean, it, it These just... These people live mind. lies. You've, all, yeah. all Americans are lied to from the moment they're born. Okay, so they're taught, they're, now, they're now, lied to and taught Santa Claus and lies, and later they learn that lies are okay as long as they're... Good lies. There's good lies and bad lies. And big lies are bad, but only bad if they hurt someone bigly. So, but if they hurt them literally, well, and so when you got that kind of mentality, which is all Americans, every American goes like, that doesn't matter that Obama lied. He had a lie and cheating to get to, he had to say different things to get into the nomination. Everybody knows that. It's like, well, no, I don't know that, and I'm not accepting that, and I'm not voting for evil, and you're an asshole for taking a liar and saying this is going to be good. It's like, you're, that's why we're in the mess we're in, not because of a Republican or a Democrat, but because we are a bunch of liars who accept liars as our leaders. Well, but, but I think it's also people are afraid of their jobs. I think when I asked him, the family how, sex, I said, the how, family. Did you, how did you take the photo? Because the photo looks like it's level with her. 
and he said he went up to some high building on Rector Street, but my calculations at the 93rd floor, how many buildings are that tall? There's no building 93 floors tall. So you would have had to be, he said 20 floors below, but I calculated have to be 40 below. And so you'd be looking, you'd be looking up. So my, he showed me the proof sheet. It had two pictures of the Edna one, and then uh, a couple black frames, and then every other photo was completely different shot, you know, more of a wide shot, bigger. And um, it almost seems... Well, yeah, he, got the, he already got that shot. Well, it seems, you know. it's, it seems to me, which is just in my humble opinion, that the shot was taken from a helicopter, fed to a pho photography agency that said, here, you say this is your photo, you will get the money from each one that you sell because they do uh, art uh, shows. Now, now you, you, you met I'm this guy. I'm speculating, only speculating. Uh, but wait, I'm going to just ask him, yes. did you meet the guy? Yes, I did. Did you, did you feel that from him? The last thing he told me, because he was really nervous, I, I think he really believed that there was an airplane there. But when yeah. I showed him the 11 frames through air and then the 11 frames through the building, it, it, mm -hmm. I think it's that U Fairbanks, Evan Fairbanks shot. You know, it looks like he's shooting up from the manhole. Oh, that's a weird one. Huh? The, the, <laughs> what, the, what he does, this, 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 this guy I saw, the photographer I saw, was... Um, he said right away, it's like he wakes up out of his trance and he goes, how did he get that shot? How did he get the angle? So the feeling I got was that he felt there was some other photographer out there who got the lucky shot and he didn't mm -hmm. get it. And, but yeah. when he saw that shot, I would have thought a fellow photographer would be interested in other photographers' shots. But he looked at it and he goes, how did he get that shot? Now the 11 seconds through air and 11 seconds through the, through the building didn't phase him. He didn't care about that. He just couldn't understand the angle. So the last thing he said to me, he goes, what's in this for me? And, and I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think nobody's buying these anymore. I think they've stopped going with the, uh, the museum tours, you know, where they would go around. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody up at m and said that her friend, or she knows somebody who was a photographer who had a picture of the airplane coming out the building. And, and I said, well, I really want to see this. Now, she's somebody who accuses me of being anti-Zionist, so I have mm -hmm. to tread very carefully with her because for some people, if you have no hijackers, your whole world falls apart because you've got to have mm -hmm. somebody to blame. So it's, uh, it's delicate. Well, it's, what they're blaming is wrong anyway. It's like uh, we should be at war with Saudi Arabia and, and not with Afghanistan or, or um, Iraq for sure. There's a, I mean, that's all, that's all hocus pocus, and that might be why they're, they're trying to keep me away, to, because they don't want me to have any of the, it's, what I was trying to tell people to be independent of all this stuff was not going to help them in any way. And they have a very big marketing campaign going on with this, with 9-11 Truth. There's a lot of money being made out there, and actually it's crumbling away, because they destroyed it. But bottom line, they'd like to get all these people out and finish with them, get them back into peace movements, where they're, where they're doing harmless stuff in pink outfits and passing out in front of police and, and, and that, that all works really fine for them. They don't care. It's, it works really good. You know, because petitions are really great. They go into the garbage so easy. It's, it's, it's amazing that people feel good that they got their petition in. It's like, how, you had a big fight about your petition there at, at the church. Well, what, you know why? The, my, my, no, the, I, the petition that I'm supporting is the one that includes the Office of City Attorney General, somebody who will prosecute for the rights of citizens. Huh, and, oh, that should have happened that first day. That, I was, see, I was never into the conspiracy part until way later, but I always wondered why there wasn't a criminal investigation. There was no sealing of the, of the crime scene. There was no... And they just, and then when the, the Afghans were asking for an evidence, the Americans just said, we know. No, but, but that, that's what I'm saying, Rick. We don't have an office of city attorney general. When I was down at St. Mark's, I wasn't going to hijack their event because, you know, I'm trying to get there so I can speak about nonviolent communication, so I don't want to step on any toes. I was only announcing that Sabrina Rivera from We Are Change and I made a handshake agreement to have a show with one of my detractors on YouTube who we use nonviolent communication to work it out with and who actually in many ways knows more about TV fakery than anyone I met because he was in the control room during 9-11 when he was told to cut the channels, cut the fucking channels, you know, they're pounding on the door. 
And on oh. 9-11, MNN, for no technical reason, cut all of their channels. Exactly when you need a public access station to be mm -hmm. available for the, the heartbreak, the fear, you know, the trauma, the terror of the people, where was it? So he says MNN dropped the ball on 9-11. So he and I, he thought I was a bad guy, just like you didn't like me too at first. Mm -hmm. And and we're all getting to know each other, and you get so edgy in this in this movement, or, or whatever you want to call it. And that's why I sort of backed away from it, because I'm saying, is this really healthy for the people who are involved if you don't have something to do? And to me, 911realinitiative.org, uh, realinvestigation.org, is the ballot initiative that will put in an office of city attorney general so that later on at, at St. Mark's, Frank Morales was giving a whole litany of ills that we could start to get into <laughs> once we do Yeah, but election. even that, you know, yeah, I don't know, have you ever been deep enough into politics to know that you can't really go anywhere with these people? I've actually, because I was there in New York and I have actually met them, they tried to recruit me, I didn't go for it. and. I know other people who did go for it, and they're making millions and millions and millions, and they're all in the politics now. I know barkeepers who who have moved up into this. It's like they pick their people and they select them up and they pull them in. And when you're in this game, you're in it, and you're in it deep. And they have they call it the special train. It's the tra train that's been around for, since eternity. And to get on that train, you got to know somebody and you got to commit to something, and you have to pay a lot of big money into the politicians. And the Democrats hold the Empire State, so it's uh, and that's why Pataki. I know all of Pat uh, Pataki's uh, people and all the people that helped him get into office and all. The, and I knew that he was going to have problems anyway, because yeah, it's it, it's it's such a scam. And it, the only way I knew that for sure was because I I was in competition with another guy in the in the television industry, and he came to brag when he had been recruited. And like uh, and exp and told me the whole thing. He was like so happy that he was now on this had a seat on this eternal train. And next thing he's goddamn right there with the governor, you know. And the, uh, the before that he was just a barkeep who was putting on rock and roll shows with deadbeat bands, you know. Wow. So when uh, did when did you leave New York? Uh, I left about four or five months after nine eleven. I, I mean, it's like a scratching eyeball there. It was, it was on the news all the time. Even when I was leaving the country, I stopped at my father's in Chicago, and when I got there, it was even nicer because it wasn't on the news anymore. It wasn't anything. It was normal news, the baseball game, da, 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 and there was nothing about New York and the hole in the ground and what are they doing and the burning smoke in the air. And, the, and so for me being there and having that, I had to get out. Plus, I lost it. in there were all my investment banks that were investing in my online TV efforts. Three days after that, I was supposed to do a demonstration with uh, with um, AP to, to show them how to do wireless broadcasts anywhere in the city using that big antenna that went down. So and once that went down, it was impossible to do it until they rebuild a building big enough to have an antenna over the whole place. So that's the end of wireless from any point in the city. Wow, that's so interesting. Can you explain online TV? Or online TV was, well, it was, it was founded in 1996 to bring uh, television over the Internet, interactive TV. And it was the first to broadcast 24 hours a day or using multiple channels. And we were the first one to broadcast real advertising out of it. We had Google ads, not Google, it was YouTube at the time, or you, you who, and that first you who ad was... This is Paula Gloria, and this is another episode farther down the rabbit hole with Rick Siegel. Rick Siegel had original footage of 9-11, I think about 58 minutes, that's become the subject of uh, a lot of provocative controversy. We've gone over that in uh, in previous shows that, uh, you know, it was a copyright issue and 9-11 Mysteries wasn't being faithful to, uh, to his footage. So, Rick, thank you for joining us again. And uh, now we're going to talk about the implications of 9-11 and the mm -hmm. financial markets. Uh -huh. uh, I think there was only one little part of it. Well, actually, because they, they took everything over at that point. Uh, it's just, if 9-11 is the actual move into a 
communist fascist state, the actual finishing touches of a communist fascist state that probably started somewhere in the late 60s with the advent of that first meeting of governors that happened where they they changed the meaning of the states. So, uh, and at that point it started to change. We're only seeing the culmination because if you if you, I think Paula, when you went to school, didn't you have civics in your classes? Yes, I did. Didn't you have to know the Constitution and be able to recite it before yes. you, uh, yeah? So they don't have any of that anymore. And and we were taught our rights, and we were taught the state constitution. You had to memorize all of this stuff and know it. My my teacher was particularly uh, patriotic, and boy, you, if you didn't know everything backwards and forwards and what was happening, so you understood your rights. And no, none of the people know this anymore, Paula. When you're talking to people that are went to school after the '60s, they do not get civics. They do not have constitution. They don't have to pass any of those tests. All they have to do is know how to be nice to their friends. The uh, school system is the same as the communist school system was. And uh, I have a communist wife who knows it well and freaks all the time. Oh, that's what we used to do. And I'm like, yeah, because it's a communist system. And you're slipping into communism and fascism. Again, I say you're because I left there. And when I left, I took myself out of that country because it's the only way now. People aren't standing up. They weren't when I was leaving. So if you're not going to stand up for your freedom, your rights, and now for everything, then you're in dire straits, and you should actually remove yourself. And remove yourself because you can't pay into the system. You're giving it its validity. You're giving it its. You can't vote. If you vote, you're you're giving it its authority. You're saying, yeah, I got to vote because you're my authority. No, they have no authority over you. Give them up because they're they're. It's such crap. If you want to attach yourself to these idiots, I mean, they're they're totally bizarre. Uh, so 9/11 took away most of your freedoms. Most of you don't know it because you haven't done too much. But preemptive arrests are no problem anymore. Arrests with no charges. All the things that fought for 400 years, not just two, but 400 years are gone. So, and the 200 year stuff, forget that, that's all gone too. The Constitution's all finished. No one has a constitutional right because you're all under the new uh, P-A-T-R-I-O-T Act, the, the short form into Patriot. Shouldn't use the word Patriot because it isn't the Patriot Act, it's an acronym, P-A-T. It has nothing to do with patriotism. It has to do with the state authority. So, not a state authority is taken into the financial crisis. It isn't so bad if your day-to-day -day life isn't being infringed upon. So, and people are getting used to being searched with no reason and to having to show papers for no reason, just like it was in Germany. I mean, I can, you can understand how the Germans didn't have a problem as the state started to slowly move in, you know, especially if it's like, hey, you weren't Jewish, you didn't have that yellow armband, you never got stopped. But, you look a little Jewish, yeah, you got stopped. Sure, you have to show your ID, but that's okay. You can go on. It's like, papers, please. It's like, but that's America right now. But America still wants to think that they're freedom. When I was 16 years old in my U.S. history class, he told us this would happen. He said, right now there's communist Russia and there's America. We have a capitalist system, they have a communist system. You're going to watch them come together and cross over. And you'll see that the communists will still call themselves communists in Russia, and they'll, but they'll be capitalists. And we'll still be calling ourselves free and capitalists, but we'll be communists. So, and that's basically what's happening. People think and they want to vote for Obama. Why? Because he wants to give everybody <laughs> health insurance. Where was a promise in an independent world that you're going to have health insurance? It ain't there. This it's ridiculous. So not, but the main thing is the financials. People got to understand what's happening right now. Seven hundred billion dollars. It's it's called a bailout. No, it's not called a bailout. What they're doing is they're giving seven hundred billion dollars to cover all the bad debts that these bankers have made. These bankers make bad debts not with you, the nice people. They make bad debts with their friends. It's like they're constructing something and everything falls through. They got bogus cement. They didn't really have their permits. Everything fell through. So like ten millions in their pockets because they bought cars and stuff and they use it on another project. Well, that's a bad loan. Oh, awfully sorry, but the bank carries it because it's his friend. His friend does that. Friends do that. I don't know if you've ever had corruption handed to you on a platter, but I have in several times. 
I have had that handed to me several times in my life. When they start you on the path to corruption, it's always on a small bit first. There will always be two people with you on the other side. The one person is your authority figure, the one who you, who hires you. And what they do is they tell you that they need something. And you know that they need this because there's a lot of paperwork and accounting that has to be done. So you're going to do this because here's what we want you to do. You're going to do this, and we're going to give you 10000 to do it. And you give us an invoice back for this 10000 We give you the 10 You give us 5 under the table. You keep the other 5 you gave us nothing but this invoice, and we'll make sure that the company pays it. The other guy, you don't even know who he is. He was introduced. He's like another friend in there, but he's your witness. Because like now, now they've got you. They always do this with two people. I've had it happen several times. And uh, usually you are going to accept this because it's like, no, it's okay. You know, it, it, to me it was like, Rick, now that you're working for our big international company, uh, and you're a very highly respected, highly paid authority on this, on, um, uh, on corporate restructuring. Um, you know, you could get a job anywhere. We're hoping that you'll stay here and work at this, and here's what we want you to do. And at that start, you know you're making a lot of money without doing anything, and all you got to do is do the same slime that you're watching happen that other people are actually slime. So, and, but most of the times you've got your job, like you said, you got your job, you got your family, you got your kids, and it's a small thing that they ask. It's not really big. The small eyes are easy, and you're doing it for your boss, and he said it's okay, and you're doing it, and it's okay, and you got some money. Wow, you can get that washer and dryer, and your family's happier, but it starts to get bigger. And at one point, they could pull 9-11 off, and you just shut up. So, it isn't a, it is not not understandable that that would happen okay now the financial stuff that's happening in right now the 700 billion dollars what this is a guy from wall street down there in washington wants them to give him this money his first plan is you give me the 700 billion i'm going to hire my friends down on wall street to figure out who should get the money then we're going to give to money to any of the loans that are outstanding that are bad, only bad loans. We'll only take the bad loans because we're going to leave all these private companies and banks, all, all these guys who screwed everything up, with all their profits so that they can continue to do business with you. Otherwise, you can't do business with these people. I mean, but the logic is so flawed. Do you want to do business with these people? They're, they're, they should be dying. They should be dead companies. Your company would be dead if you lost billions of dollars. You, you would you'd close up. you got to close up shop. And they only made one company close up shop because he wasn't friendly. You know, that wasn't a friendly company. He wasn't playing ball. Which so one was that? Well, it was, I think it was Lehman that went down and, and had to go into bankruptcy. But they're going to pull out anyway because they're all going to let them change themselves magically into commercial banks so that they can take... Loan. You can go and make your deposit now at their bank, just like you do at Citibank. Of course, they didn't have to do any of the qualifications to be a bank, not that you need too many of them. But, not, but <laughs> it, now, you don't need too many. You only need four people, and each one has to put up 100000 You've got a banking license. That's all you need. You've got to put up that bond, and then they give you a million dollars to play with. And if you can get depositors in, every time somebody gives you $100, you get $1,000 from the government. Now, and that's how they scammed you. Now, they really scammed because down in Wall Street, they take that thousand and they can do it a leverage, it's called leveraging it, up to eight, 80 times. So they can take your thousand and make it $80,000. And there's no money. Yeah. yeah. There, there was nothing there to begin with. But now you got 80000 and like they'll tell you to put it into this. But like this is something that a friend was really doing, and you get a kickback. So, and when the friend does this stuff, oh, it all fails, but that's okay. We got something else on the pot. These guys, they, they fill flames up. I played on the market for a year and a half and uh, did several articles on how to manipulate the market. And then once I figured out how to do it and throw stock up and down a few times and made some money, I went, you know what? This is screwed. Anyone can do this. I had only $100,000 and I was doing this. Imagine guys who had millions of dollars. They could just like. But screw the whole world. It's like, it's amazing. Mean, and they are mean, right now. You mean, Rick, you pulled away from it just because it wasn't very fulfilling? Because I see in looking at your page here at onlinetv.com, 
you have quite a history in uh, in broadcast and music and innovation. You were involved with some of the early web, uh, World Wide Web. So you just sort of felt that was not good karma. No, no, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, well, no, it wasn't that that I'm pulling away from. It's the right now I'm pulling away from what's happening to our country. It's like I would love to be the, doing the stuff I did. Matter of fact, I am. I'm right now. I'm doing a. Um, getting ready to do a film in Morocco with uh, Canal Plus, which is a big French television network and an English television network that are putting up the money. And I'm doing a film for the Moroccan government to show. I don't think it's the government. It's to show Morocco coming into the future because it's come a long way in 20 years. But, but, but so, Rick, it such yeah. a sort of sounds like you kind of gave up on America. You just left after 9-11? Yeah, well, it's like I came back. I tried to rally the people to come to Washington, D.C., and instead I, I got an incredibly bad treatment, and that's one of the reasons I think they canned me out of the 9-11 truth is because I'm not going to sit around and make petitions. I'm going to either, either we're standing up and going to D.C. to take over because that's the only where, that's the route. you got to strike the route. If you're not willing to strike the route, then you're just playing games. And if playing games, is, that's what they want you to do. Well, just, second, get, yeah. it, it, just because we don't know all that you know about the, the inner workings of finances, when you say strike the route, I'm constantly hearing with 9-11 uh, people, Nico Haupt even on the Howard Stern thing mentioned um, Goldman Sachs. Can you explain that to a novice? Uh, Goldman Sachs. I don't know if they're such a big deal. They're the last of the fine of the of the. They're trying to struggle as an investment bank. They're all up there in the same eleven banks. There's eleven banks, and they actually own everything. See, that's if you bail out the stuff, they own all the companies. It's like when you get down to a company, GM. You're going to see that's even on a separate issue. Seven hundred billion is just for them, the bankers and the investment houses. Well, GM is, needs another seventy billion to keep up. Why? Why do they have to keep up? Because they lost everything. Because the same owners are these bankers, screwed them and took everything over to China, where they got slave labor and they're making the cars out of there. Americans didn't seem to care because Wall Street was growing. Wall Street grows because it has international profits. Okay, it, now now here, it, it, okay, I don't want to interrupt, but I'm trying to kind of hmm? grasp because it's so big. Carl Pearson was saying, with Office of City Attorney General, you could ensure what the Federal Trade Commission isn't. In other words, you can't be uh, selling below market so that Walmart is actually losing a lot of money, but they hide it. Maybe they bring in other kinds of, uh, of, of money, like, you know, there's a whole drug economy that's never recognized. I don't think it's yeah. losing money. I think because they don't pay their labor. There's no labor, zero labor. I buy it over here in Europe for uh, the equivalent of two dollars. I get a complete uh, screwdriver, a really good screwdriver kit with anodized steel tips and all the different things, and a and a swizzle hair. Just the metal alone, I'm going. I pay two dollars for this. It's like where, and it's in a plastic box. How the, what the, But that's what I'm impossible. saying. That's what I'm saying. Just the metal alone isn't, it means labor is not an issue. Even if you don't pay your labor but, anything, what's going on? He's saying, they're, 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 he's saying they're doing it to become a monopoly. That in other words, right. that's the price that you pay to squeeze out all of the competition to give no jobs to the local areas, you know, wipe out the local uh, regions. Well, it's the American way. It's what they taught us in business school, how to, how to but not, you know, it's called the lost leader. Yes, 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 but what about antitrust? Antitrust, it's not, well, it's not that, that would mean the government isn't a part of it, but they are, because all the, everyone is over in China now, and China has all the America's money. They're all, it's all sitting there. We gave them all our money. So they have all the money. They're waiting for all the property to go down. And when they do the bailout, where do you think that money is going to come from? So who's going to own it? It's like, and, and that's the other thing. The bailout isn't bail, It's a nationalization. If you're taking something on a national level, it's a nationalization. So they nationalized. And they didn't nationalize the companies or the business or anything. They're nationalizing the debts. And they're leaving privatized the profits and the ability to make more profits. And they're doing this under the guise that these guys can't make profit and sell you money unless we take all these bad debts. 
But they're not even selling you money. They're giving you debt paper, more debt paper. It's like you're not even getting real money because they took the real money away in 1972 when they floated off gold. That was the last time so, Americans couldn't have... Yeah. So what's going to happen? What's your idea? Because you're a man of a lot well, of... Well, the thing is, what's going to happen is the government will continue on and they will do this because both the parties have said they will continue on. They're going to do it... Uh, you would think somehow different ways, but no, there's 700 billion or even more, probably closer to a trillion and a half, is just going to be funneled out into nowhere. But there is no trillion and a half anyway. That's why no one cares. They're just going to like make it up, print it up, and hand it out to their friends. Then like all the banks, and they do. They're actually telling you that. So are they going to go to those big billion banks? No, and there's even a heavier catch. They're trying to do this to any bank or any business that does business in from the world in America. So every British is covered. As long as I do business there, I can be covered. I don't have to have much less than one little office. As long as I got to do business there, any of my debts, I, let's pile up all my bad debts. We're going to hand them over to the Americans. They're giving out free money. It's free money because no one's paying for it, and the taxpayers... The, you know, you're the one who they're telling you has, it's on your children. You'll never pay it. It's your children and their children in slavery, but not because they'll sell it out. Well, China has all the money, so who's going to end up owning all the housing, giving them all their money? It's China because we're going to take more Chinese goods. So how do I get your property? Uh, you owe me more money. I'm going to foreclose on you. So, so what? What do you think should be done? What's, what's, your, what's your answer? Uh, you gotta, gotta go to Washington. Everyone's gotta get in the streets and when, it won't happen, Paula, until 40, 42% of the people have to be displaced. And it's getting close already. And it, it's like, if they do this, you will, if they do the bailout, you will see us change for a few months. But uh, Europe's not gonna accept this because you've devalued the money more. It's already been devalued 50% in two years. Devalued. There is no inflation. Out here, it's the same prices. In there, you, when we deal with dollars, it's you've been devalued 50 percent. There's, if they're not using the proper terminology, they're trying to couch it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Who owns us, right. Rick? Well, China, basically. But you're communists already. Your schools are communist. You've got socialized medicine. You got your, you you know, you got your total care from birth to death. You you can't do anything. Your children aren't yours. They can take them in at any time. You know, you can't discipline them. You can't do diddly like you don't. There's nothing left of freedom in America. It's true. It's nothing left. There's nothing left of privacy. It's like your home is not your private castle anymore. Your home is for them to be in. They can come into your home, and especially if you got a child. Then you're you're all, it's all the states, and they've made it clear. It's <laughs> true. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing work with Patience Poet. She's a lady in San Bernardino who's watching the child so-called care courts, and she just spoke the other day about something called Phoenix, and they had Operation Sunrise one do one morning at four o'clock in the morning. They came into, you know, uh, poor people's houses. I guess, uh, you know, under the. Uh, 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 illusion that they're going to be taking them from humble surroundings and put them into better homes. They, they took 39 children from their homes at 4 o'clock in the morning in San Bernardino and they want to apparently duplicate this program all over the United States. I think it's, it's such a wonderful hard. program for the churches, isn't it? <laughs> no, I'm it's, sorry. It, no it's, it's, it's horrible. I know. It's so horrifying. And the thing, and mothers have to go through this and and children have to go through it. I was freaked that they did it. Do you know what they did in Texas when they they raided a? It was a religious cult, but a legitimate one. It was the original Quakers, the ones who believe in the multiple marriages, mm -hmm. and and they they tried to play that up as a, a schism. Yeah. But still, it's a legitimate cult. You know, it's a religion. Right. Leave the people alone. Right. They're peaceful. They're doing fine. They go in errands, and because this community had a couple of and it's, they haven't improved it yet, but they say there may have been a couple of perverts in there. It's like as if no neighborhood is without its perverts. So it's like ridiculous. And they did this with no papers, no courts, no nothing, just because 
they fake the phone call. Okay. And the, I mean, it's ridiculous. They don't even need papers to take your children. And they can walk in, and when you see these big, burly guys and guns, and they're taking children away, what the hell are you doing to these kids' minds? And nothing was wrong with them. Nothing was wrong with the parents. It's, it's something's wrong with the state. So and what can you do? It's like, really, it's got to be displaced because petitions aren't going to do it. They're not going to change. They're making millions off their back. Everyone's getting rich, nice properties. I mean, Obama's got a huge place in New York for a guy who just does community service for a couple of years. He's styling, man. He's in one of these houses that uh, it would be like having a place on uh, Park Avenue and, a and 88th Street, you know, way up there in the really nice buildings. Whoa. So cool. He's got a great place, and it's right near the lake. No, I know. We've heard about Obama. Webster Tarpley doesn't like him. He calls him a Manchurian candidate, but... He is, and, and yet, what do you got? McCain. Oh, my God. I don't, we don't even have to start there, I think. It's like McCain is the end of the universe anyway. So, and, so and, Rick, I'm going to send you uh, uh, Carl Pearson's 9-11 ballot initiative because the Office of City Attorney General does give some hope. And I'm going yeah. to post this, and I'm going to have him take a look at some of your comments because you are enormously creative. And do you miss America? Because if you were, oh, yeah. if you were at Tompkins Park, to explain more what you were doing there. Oh, the problem I would have. Oh, yeah, I was doing the uh, every summer we would broadcast the uh, the anti folk festival out of Tompkins Square Park. It was a whole day festival of music. <laughs> all the all the street musicians were there and. It was great, and again, we're very careful to get all our rights, and we sign the papers and have the rights uh, available. I'm very much into the copyrights because when people do their artwork, it's like the only way you can hope that they can get something is by helping them pr protect it. So even at that point, I'd be with them, here's what I'm going to do, here it is on a piece of paper, thank you very much, and, and you should be careful too, and you could send that, see, you got a show. Edit that piece you got, I'm telling you, edit it. Well, for your sake, I'll so, do it, I'll do it. Yeah. And you'll see I'll they should be like, up. oh, that looked really cool. It's like, sure. It's like, if you're going to show their show, that's why they're going to be pissed. They think you're just some, like, hacker person up yeah. there with a camera going to go hack it. But if you're showing you are somebody legitimate and you say, here, I want to show this on this, you tell them your show, send them your little letterhead. It's like most people are not going to say anything. It's like, same, I wouldn't have had much to do with Sophia. I would have probably asked her for like 10 cents for every DVD because I did that with, with Dylan. Here's how horrible I am. I go, you, if you make no money, I don't want anything. If you're making money, I should make something. Right. So I didn't say anything wrong with that, and I still right. don't. It's right. like, uh, you know, I'm never about to take somebody who's not doing making anything, but if you're making it, why shouldn't I have my little right. piece? Right. 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 You know? It's right. like... So, and, and that Dylan didn't go for it, and that's okay, he didn't use it. But she never even asked for it, so <laughs> what she did was horrible. It's like, it turned me into a liar? I can't, you know, I have to stand up what, and say, hey. What, see, Rick, Rick, what my problem is, is I think a lot of this 9-11 um, hangout theory, that's why I keep trying to go deeper, and, and I'm always very uh, sensitive when... People tell me there's certain things you can't think because I'd like to be able to consider everything, even if it's stupid. Let me. Well, you should be. Let Why me, not? Let me go through the process until I can put that to rest. Um, yeah, and but, like, but hopefully you're not hung up on one thing and you go to everything no. because basically what I, I tell people is like 9/11 is nice and it's right here. It's like you're in the you're in the clue game and we're in the living room. We're discussing the clues. But upstairs in the bedroom, the rape is still going on, and they're stealing your car in the front yard, and they're raping your little sister down the block. So, you know what? We can spend another hour at the game, and then let's go out because they're fucking with us heavy out there, if you understand what I'm saying. It's like yeah, but, but in understanding what you're saying, what, what do you think is the most constructive solution? Because you gave a little paragraph in your email about how you felt you were close to getting people mobilized to, to, to march on Washington. Well, that was in, 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 that was in, the, in, in Los Angeles. I had a thousand people, they were roaring because they knew that was the only solution. The only thing to do is to go to D.C. The only way to do it peacefully is with, with one to ten million people who are there. And, like, there means a lot of displaced people because you just got to be mad enough. That, and then how do they stop those people walking into the, and taking over? And no one leaves until it's done. It's like it's our place, we're going to take it, we're allowed to do it, and we're supposed to be doing it. We're supposed to have guns to, to take back our own government if it got this way. 
That's why the Second Amendment is there, not to go hunting. It was there because if the government ever screwed up like this, we could go destroy it and rebuild what we wanted to have. Well, what's, been, what's the Second Amendment? That's the one for the guns. I it's see. the right to bear arms, and it was the right to bear arms and make a militia and to, to take the government and take it back down, redress it. That means to take all its clothes off and redress it. Wow. Um, it's a strong, it's much stronger than they want to ever talk about. To me, that's the most strong amendment. It's like we got the right to bear arms, and it's not to go hunting. It doesn't say so that you can catch bears and wolves. It's because you need the gun so that if governments ever get out of hand, you can go and take it back. Right, right. And, like, but that's it, why the... the, the yeah. it, it just seems as though also we've, we've got another kind of weapon now, and it seems like you're the master of that, too, looking at your resume here at OnlineTV.com. Yeah, it doesn't do much with the... With information. The, well, that would get the people there. See, the only way I figured to go and not take a bullet is to go with the, all the Americans. Americans have to be ready to go. It's like, and if this works, and they, see, it's like I have to hope that the government can continue their rape, because then enough people could be in the streets that they would go. No, don't say we that. We gotta do something. Do it's the only way. The it ain't. It ain't gonna go any other way. You're not gonna see any change any other way. You know, because they're not going to let anyone in who's going to rock that boat. You watch how that money gets spent no matter what. $700 billion is going to go to the banks. $100 billion is going to go to the banks. And $70 billion more is going to go to to the, to the G General Motors alone. And then another $600 billion just to run the government up until January. Say, You're going to spend... Rick, yeah. we've only got a minute left. I'm just saying, um, you are saying that it has to get worse before it can get better? Like that oh, yeah. alcoholic hit bottom so, type of deal? Well, it's not bottom. 42% have to be displaced. Like if this crash comes, this could be the, the initiating thing to actually get the people enough to go and take back what was really theirs. I mean, because it, it doesn't seem to be enough to stop be stopped in the streets and being searched for no reason. If that ain't enough, then I don't know, because that's in civics. Don't you realize that's what they taught us, that we fought for this, not to be had that happen. It's like, so, Rick, we're going to be having to end this show, but I'm joined now I, by Posar Posar, and he's going to have some questions that we can spill on to the next show, if you don't mind. Do you have 28 more minutes, or do you want to go to bed? No, uh, you can go on. It's only 10 o'clock here. Okay. I, I was just wondering, how is it that you arrive at uh, uh, the 42% at 42%. Because that has to be what's in the streets. It's like 5% to 7% have to be active. It's based on based on what would happen at the revolutionary state during the Revolutionary War, how many people it took. If you, if you studied it well, you understood that 30% of all Americans got the hell out and went back to England because they thought everything was a freak show here. And there was only about a third, 30%. That we're actively slow, endorsing. Slow, slow down. Everybody thought they thought it was a freak show here. Oh no! Thirty percent of the people said, "Whoa!" and they went back to England. They want nothing to do with these freaky Americans who are trying to do this. Trying to get okay. independence. Trying to get independence. Yeah, exactly. So it, basically, you could consider them English neutrals. We're not going to go and fight about this. We're getting the hell out. And the ones who stayed of the English, they're the ones who are holding on to their property. And the rest of them wanted to get rid of the English because they impinged upon them creating money. It was all about money. It had nothing to do with anything else except the Americans wanted to print their own money. And the king didn't want to have that happening. Do nothing to do with taxation without representation or any of that bullshit. Okay, along those lines, I was at St. Mark's looking at uh, a statue of Tompkins, who, mm -hmm. would, who would appears in 1812... Mm -hmm. uh, used his own money because the bankers weren't going to lend the U.S. government more money unless he 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 provided his own assets as collateral. Do you know anything about that? Do you know anything mm -hmm. about Tompkins? No, I don't really know about that. But I would know that by 1812 they were already had the war. The war the the wars were happening. They had a war with England coming up because uh, they were passing some laws here that were going to make it illegal to, to for English to be here anymore with their titles. So, and, and that if you got a title like uh, knight, the knighthood that was given to, uh, to Giuliani, 
it's that's well you couldn't do that and he couldn't be a knight because you couldn't accept that and be an american he'd have to give up his american citizenship actually being a knight he can't be the president that's all he can't be because he received a foreign uh you know, foreign dignitary he's nobody's supposed to be above the law here is that a good thing a uh, witch well it's a good thing not to have royalty in this country that's for sure that's what we try to get away from this the royalty and the cults and, and i mean all those religious cults they're all the same yeah but you and, seem you seem pretty forgiving about the bona fide cult you said down in texas who was quaker and no no it's well forgiving is then you know every freak has got his way and i'm not interested in in telling somebody that you're you shouldn't do this because you're that freaky it's like as long as you're cool and doing your stuff i want to see it even and i'll check it out and more power to you you're not hurting anybody what the hell is wrong it's like that is what america's about it's like i encourage them to do that and not yet i want to protect those kids it's like why were they screwing with these children so it has nothing to do with whether i agree with their outlook and life same i i love all it's like they're they, everyone deserves their little place i don't have anything against any of the people who believe in all this stuff it's like anyone can be taken but into any like, kind of ride. But, but you question whether there really was some pedophilia, right? You think that might be... <laughs> Even the, their state themselves said that there's the possibility of two people that were doing this. This is out of a community of 800, right. 800 parents and 400 children. It's like, so go look in a little corner in New York and tell me how many pedophilias you might right. find in a neighborhood with families. And like, so one of them, it's like, what are you trying to do? And they did this. It was horrifying. You you, you talk to this woman who all these people invaded. This is a, a people who are trying to live this life in the old prairie costumes and they don't want to see um, uh, Hilden on the TV in her miniskirt as a symbol of something you should grow up to and they don't watch tv and now these children are ripped and sat in front with big macs in front of these tv sets to say here's what you really want to be look at how flashy this girl can is and like oh yeah and she talks so cool and oh it's ridiculous and these people try to get away from it they got whatever you know that i've been to the far east you have too they have multiple marriages out there and it works fine I have no oh, idea yeah, yeah, what... Yeah, yeah, you know, the Hindu marriage law was changed in 1950 that said a man... Before that, 1950, they wanted to be more Western. And before that, a man could have more than one wife. But you know what? A man wife, had uh, clothes uh, south, no, no, of, no, south a, of Goa. A wife, a until wife. The, uh, the, no one wore clothes in the south of India until the tourists came. Yeah, no, but a wife could have more than one husband, too. So it, it, was, yeah. a little, it was a little more complicated, but they decided to just go. I don't know, maybe it's like a property kind of thing that's running. I'm not sure. But well, in the Muslim countries, it was, it, when I met the people up in Mazar Sharif, it was a more of a thing that only the people who had money could afford them. That's so right. it's, so it was like if they took your daughter, it was an honor because she would be looked after by, and it, it was the guy, I met the prince, so he had like ten wives, you know, all different ages, and like, but only a couple of them he liked. But it's like his responsibility to his people that he takes all these women on, because otherwise they'd be out there doing all kinds of other strange things. So these, it's it was just, it's strange, but who am I? They're not hurting anybody, and uh, they were doing fine. Women were quite happy, and every you don't see people crying about it. It's like if you were, it's you were there, you... It's, it's always complicated with multiple relationships, trust me. Mm. You, know, you must know that, too. But uh, what I want to get back to is, uh, you know, you miss America. So what, what mm. will it take to get you back here? Change in the, go uh, change in the government. And, and how do you think you were saying the marches, you need to have people go to D.C., but you want some petitions yeah. in hand, right? Nah, petitions don't mean anything. They'll tear them up. You got to go in with the intention to take the government back. It's like your government, your buildings. You know, they, they, it's like the funny thing. You're going to walk down there. These are your buildings, your government, your, and you can't go in. You're not allowed in. You got to get certs to go in, even if they let you in. You can't go in here. It's like so. You got to do it with at least a million to ten million people because you can't say no to that kind of it's amount just, of people who just, just keep coming in. But it's it's not, like you can only arrest a few hundred thousand max. And what my plan was, we send those people, 10,000 to every single precinct, and each one is standing in line waiting to go into the jail cell. They're 
they're there beforehand. So they're, they're not going to be able to do anything. You lock them up. One to ten million people, and that's why you need 42 percent, because if 42 percent are in the street, only 10 percent of those people will actually get up to do something. The rest are just going to be there crying. So, I mean, this is reality. And out of them, you'll get five to seven percent. That's enough. They're, now we got five to ten million people, and we're sitting there in Washington, D.C., because these people are going to get up and do something, and they're going to be white, and they're going to be black, and they're going to be Puerto Rican, and they're going to be Spanish, and we've got one thing in common. We're all getting screwed, and, like, the only people making money are these are bankers and big corporations. They're not handing money to people. They're handing money to huge corporations so they can give you more of the same screwing. Yeah, that, that's that's why we were with the Pickering brothers last night. You were talking about the UFO, the black ops, and uh, they were talking about disclosure and contact with other civilizations and going to the UN. And I said the UN is an organization that's so out of touch with the needs of of regular people that if there is it's such sort a thing, of like a third world, uh, um, it's. Yeah, it's definitely changed its scope. It's it was it's originally just a banker structure. It was a bunch of bankers. It's like I, I my whole thing to all people is like, please find the founding document and the list of the founding fathers, and you won't find it because they're not going to let you see it. The founding document is done by bankers, and it's only bankers like Rockefeller and Morgan who signed it. And like so, you'd understand that it's not anything to do with the governments. It was just supposed to be a meeting place where they would might try to talk to them make them like sit down at a table and now it's turned into a place where most of the third world gets its money fed to them from America and that money's coming from taxpayers and they're not even coming from taxpayers that's a joke right. you're being sold into slavery for the rest of your eternal lives and your lives of all your children most of this I think is payback for the revolution they said they were going to do this and I can't believe it's true but it's definitely worse they said they're going to give it back to you worse than you ever had it before. And if this isn't worse than before the Revolutionary War, I don't know what is. I, I can kind of relate to what you're saying about it being worse because um, it's very exciting when you talk about making this type of change in D.C., but when I go around, I see the spirits of people are broken. And, and that because they is think so they can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> And, and like you say, St. Mark's, it's true. It, it just takes heroic efforts to, uh, to kind of get through that and see a bright light at the end of the tunnel. But then I keep looking at the statues, Stuyvesant, Tompkins, and I think, what did they go through also? You know, and, and can, we, uh, can we maybe access our technology, realize that our wealth comes from technology and not our labor, from capital and not our labor, and just insist on economic policy where we participate in the wealth and not through jobs, but through access to the capital, access to the wealth. And then even those who are wealthy can say, you know what, if we don't cut loose with a little bit of, of sharing of the ownership, we have more than we can handle anyway. There's not enough creativity in the mix. How much can you screw artists, take away their copyrights and so on, and still get art, still get something that makes life worth living? That, oh, it's easy to just give a few pieces. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that, that's what I mean. I'm appealing to you because you're an artistic person, and I can see by this fascinating resume, OnlineTV.com, that you've got a lot of talents, and I'm very sad you're not in the country. Uh, yeah, but I'm giving a lot over here. Okay. <laughs> where they're, where they're, they're being very gracious. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, any any other thoughts about what you want people in New York to know, and 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 even in India, I've got subscribers in India because I've got a passion. Oh uh, yeah, it's been a long world. time since I was in India. I spent three years there. Oh really? Three years there, and yeah, a couple of years in Afghanistan, and. Oh really? I never made it to Afghanistan. Oh yeah, I did the. I did everything. I went. I was seven years traveling out there. Wow. All th wow. Into China and Tibet and. And uh, Mongolia and Irkutsk and, and well, you know, Russia, Siberia, everywhere. <laughs> wow. One thing I'm noticing going around, uh, I was at Union Square Market, peaches are $4 a pound. Wow. And, 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 and like I'm watching, I'm watching it and I'm watching New Yorkers are just really having to count their, their money more slowly. And it reminds me. No, I just got four kilos. That's 8.8 .8 pounds. And I paid $3, 3 
three dollars thirty cents. Oh, wow. oh, it's so cheap here. It's one of the reasons I'm here too. It's like it's not killing, and there's no one. No, in, there's normal what we call inflation here. It's still a sort of a devaluation. What you got is really devaluing your money. They're they're tricking you with their words so that they don't freak you out. But they they devalued your currency already 50 percent. And if you add another two trillion, which they're planning to do before the elections, to the debt of it's like two trillion. That's like that's another like 20 or 30 percent more onto your total debt so it's a huge deflation it's going to mean 15 25 percent loss in in its value internationally at least and that's got to happen before january and like you, you don't notice as much there except you start paying a lot more for uh, gas oil and uh and the food it's like like my one of my friends said in chicago there's a dollar for an orange yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i said the oranges are free here they fall off the trees you know right. Like you just go out and eat them. Do you want to say where you were from, or you're not wanting well, to? I'm say from it? Chicago. Yeah, but I mean where you're living now. I'm living in Spain. It's a beautiful place. It's uh, great, yeah. and it's a kingdom, even though they think they're a democracy. But the king is allowing them the, that democratic stuff, and they're so young that they still aren't so corrupted yet. So it's still a pretty good place to be, and they, 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 uh, you don't get stopped and frisked. And, uh, you know, I would drive me nuts in New York. If I went into the subway and they just wanted to pull me over and look at my bag, I would be freaking all over them because it's not supposed to happen, you know? Well, I heard, I heard in Spain, Rick, that's where they set off a bomb in, in some subway expecting to sort of consolidate more fascist policy, and the people said, forget this. Because yeah, exactly. They and they elected the other party. They threw, yeah, they right. threw the bum out, you know, so right. that could happen. Well, Any well here they actually did a revolution because they tried to do the no smoking thing. <laughs> it's like the Spanish are pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to do that like in America where, okay no more smoking in restaurants or no more smoking in malls right, and in public right. buildings and the people went out in the streets and they started rioting and they said okay okay restaurants can choose and bars can choose so all restaurants all bars chose to be smoking <laughs> that was it wow no I, re I remember in Barcelona people didn't sleep you know you'd go out to dinner at, at, at midnight or maybe think of making reservations because the day is really hot and especially in the summer you come over in the summer and like whoa you just don't want to be out in the day yeah, yeah. it's hot it's the same down in the, in the desert in India, in India they used to say that only mad dogs and Englishmen were out in the middle of the day yeah, well, if you were you there in the middle of the summer? I, I've been there in the summer. It's, oh, I've been there just before the monsoon breaks. You're talking some heat. Right. It's it's amazing. It's not as bad as say in the Sahara, but it's man, it's what, what? I kept my feet in in cold iced water and my guy with a fan and a mango milkshake in my hand. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. I. Yeah. 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 Any any thoughts about uh, new businesses and things? Because I'm thinking a good business in New York is something to do with the tour. Well, well, I was doing it. I have a site called Avantrepreneur, and I do. I, I there's not much get into gold because it's still going to be good. And and you know it depends. It's like if you want to ride. It's like do you want to ride lies and shit? That's why I stay out of the stock market. And I was telling people, look at if you really a couple of weeks ago, I said just do puts. Do puts, anything, put a put. You put a put, you're going to make money. And like whoever did, made money. But now they made that illegal because you're making money. You can't make money when it's a down market. You can only make money when there's an up market. Well, the government's really weird. It's like the, they taught me puts in 1980. And, they, and I said, why would somebody want to bet on a, a, a company going bad? He says, well, because when companies are going down, you can still make money. I don't know. Okay. Or you can, the other way was that, if you're, if you're like, actually, what it was is in commodities, buying gold or antimony or special metals, which I did a lot of. I used to love buying uh, metals. I made tons of money with that. It's, it's like you could uh, buy the metal at a certain price to be delivered in two months, and to make sure that you're going to stay within a certain price range, whether it goes up or down. You can also buy a sell, like fifty cents lower, so you'll never lose more than fifty cents because either you've got to buy or sell at that price. So you're always going to get your gold. It's going to be within 50 cents, so you're really not playing much here. Maybe it's a dollar on an ounce. So you're secure, and, but you want a delivery. You want the commodity. It's like many times, I want the commodity. 
So you can you want the oil. It's like I want ten thousand barrels of oil. I want that tanker in my backyard. You'll park it over here, and you'll take the delivery. And you got it at this cheap price. Now you can sell it. And they don't like people doing that, but you can do this. And it's that's. And I always played markets as if you really want to do that, because if you don't believe in taking your product, then you shouldn't play in that market. And the speculators sort of play with this because it's as it becomes this game. It's like, and the game should really be that you see the future. It shouldn't be to crush somebody. I told you I learned if you will go to App Entrepreneur, I put the key in there, which is oh, how do you manipulate you the stock it? market? Can you spell it for me? Avant, A V A N T, okay. and then its rest is like entrepreneur, A V A N T R E P E R E U R, entrepreneur. Dot so it, it, and that's and then uh, in there I tell you how to manipulate stock markets. I don't give you all of it because I don't want people really going out there. I think it's still going to live, and then people can do this. And whether they are in shock or not, it's like to know that the stock market is manipulated. If you don't know that, then you're in danger anyway. So it's like I wish people could wake up. To, like the stock market so manipulative. And to do it is, is, see, once you know how the market works, anyone knows how, to me, anyone can do it. So that means that guys with millions could do this easily. And, and that's why do. you could, Yeah. And, and why wouldn't they? Because they had millions and like, wow, I can make a stock move. I could do it on myself because I had such a good record and I had so many accounts and I had enough money to sway it and I understood the psychology. I could make the moves happen. So once I understood that, I actually called my dad up and said, hey, I can do this. And I said, any mid, I only had enough money to manipulate mid-range stock stuff on American stock uh, in the $10, $15 range. So I couldn't do the real big stocks because you, you need to be able to sway enough trades to back up what you're trying to do. And so I could drive a stock down like 10, 20 percent and you could buy up at the lower price. And then, of course, it goes up because everything was bogus and you make 20 percent in a week. That's good. You wait six months, get your long term capital gains and 20 percent on your money every six months is pretty damn good. So right. it works. And right. plus you're in a stable company because, you know, you screwed it around. You the same like Google. They did Google. Some guy in Google just did that to United, I think. And all he did was he just got a rumor going, drove the stock price down all the time you're buying, got it down to two bucks when it was a twenty dollar stock or something. So now you're buying at a two, and within a day it pops up. You don't have to sell it and draw attention. You just wait because you want long term capital gains. It's only twenty percent versus forty percent of your profit. So it's like you wait to six months and then you sell your stock out. You made a good profit. You know you know it's going to do fine, and you just screwed everyone and. They are blaming some glitch, and you're the glitch. Wow. So and Google, you, they're, they're owned by the CIA, basically. So they're, and, they're and, the and biggest investor. NSA, I thought, according well, to you. Well, it's, it's actually all the... Hey, guys, I should send you this document I have. It was done in October 2001 that describes how they're going to create all these companies. And the ones that they couldn't create so that all services are free and that you would have to be part of them because that would be the thing to do and they must own all this because then they would have access to all the information right. no, and no. this is this was their goal Ca so Car they yeah carl pearson's got a lawsuit against them for monopoly because they acquired 65 companies if if you built it up from the bottom then that's okay but because they acquired 65 companies that is uh, anti-monopoly so Hopefully, by the time disclosure comes along, there's going to be train loads worth of documents to go over. He will have some more help on this, but I think it's very important to uh, to, well, to Google, uh, figure the CIA. Out. The CIA sold two hundred million dollars worth of their stocks uh, about a year ago. I wrote about it on my tech talk. And I had the links there. I mean, it's a public. It's do, it was done publicly. They had to release it because it's such a large amount of stock. They they didn't say whether they held more, and they still say that the that the whole intelligence community has links into that. But um, I know that they have a direct pipe. It's like they have rooms, and the rooms have pipes and infrastructure, and all of it's hooked down in New York. There's those two big buildings down on Broad Street. Yeah, and I that's heard where that. and that's where the links are. And in there they hook right in. 
And all they want to do is get it as it comes through. They took over a company called Stealth Communications. That's where they stole my computer. And it was took, taken over in November of 2001 by the Department of Defense. They bought it out. And Stealth was the hub for all of IR, IRC communications in the world. So, what's, IR, what's IRC mean, Rick? IRC are all the pirates and all the... It's IRC, Internet Relay Chat. Uh -huh. It was the original chat um, hub. Right now they do all... matter of fact, we're talking over their networks. They're, they own all the networks in New York City that have fiber, and they own that big circuit that goes around the city and that, are, that everyone's hubbed into. They became huge, and they stole my computer because I think it had that 9-11 stuff on it. They destroyed my, oh, my you computer. Mean, you mean they took your personal computer? No, I had hub my computers there because remember I told you I had this big company. Well, I had three huge computers sitting on uh, racks in their space, and for ten years I was actually six years I was with them, and then all of a sudden they just destroyed the computers and said I owed them two thousand wow. dollars. I'm like, whoa! I go, I owed you twelve thousand, and you didn't do anything like this. And they went, well, I sent the lawyer, and the lawyer is a friend of mine. Calls me back and says. You know, they said it's five years ago. I don't want to hear from you anymore, and he hung up. That was the end of my computers, the end of online TVs. Like, I had uh, 6,000 hours of concert footage, live concert footage that I had recorded on oh, there. Oh, no, you uh, had 6,000 yeah, hours of 6, stuff? 6,000 hours. In like, this is, all right, encoded. And uh. I, still own, I still have all the digital tapes, but I'd have to duplicate. And that's a two speed, so it's double time, 6,000 hours times 12,000 hours plus rewinds. And on my digital tapes to duplicate that over a computer, 12,000 hours I lost on that. So, uh, and I tried to get a lawyer to go and sue, and that was my friend. And I'm telling you, comes, everyone who goes into it comes back, I don't want to talk to you anymore, bye. That's it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm definitely going to have Carl Pearson take a look at this, uh, what you're saying, because I think people need to do something about it. This is frightening. I, I was always thinking for reasons of national security, you could start to sue YouTube or Google, and that you really... It was yeah, but see, national security isn't anything to do with what you're thinking. National security, it's when we go to Washington. That's national security. It's like they only think of national security is if you found out that they ripped you off and they're going to go pay this money out as profits, that's natural security that you don't find it out. Yeah. It's not national security for you to find out. Yeah, but you, it, it, so one, it, they don't work for you. They but, work for them. They serve and protect no, them, I know, but, not but, us. But, but every once in a while, them get so outrageous that they start to change laws. Like at one time, well, standard oil was broken changed. up. So. Yeah, is that anything like your civics lessons in this country? Nowhere near it. That's why I had to get out, too. It's like, I can't be searched every day I go into the subway. I would be freaking out. It's like, that isn't oh, what you Oh, come on, Rick. America. It's not that bad. I've never been searched. <laughs> it's not what Americans do. It would freak me searched. out. Yeah. They, they actually, like, as I was leaving okay. the last time I was there, it's like they actually, I was in the subway, and I got my big bags because I'm going to the airport, and I take the A train out there, and I, I don't have money to go take limousines. So, and I'm out there, and I take, and this guy's coming up to me. He goes, hey, you look like you got the same backpack as me. And I go, yeah. And all of a sudden, what's in your bag? He goes, what do you want to know what's in my bag for? He goes, well, it's a pretty big bag. I go, so what? <laughs> it's a pretty big bag. What do you want to know? I gotta agree. I gotta agree with you. I mean, even though I've never been searched, right? And I'm, 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 I'm African myself, right? But even though I've never been searched, just the fact that they could makes it bad enough. Yeah, it's just horrible. Just the fact thought. that they could. Yeah, and um, that they can preemptively do that. Look at the all this, all the protesters that they preemptively. They got a lot to preemptively get you because you might protest too loud. Well, you know, and yet we're talking about freedom of speech, so. It, it, you don't. You, it's like free, isn't four ninety five. You know, free. if you could, if you could, <laughs> if, you could fi if you could find someone to do the actual paperwork for you, you could actually pursue that uh, lawsuit yourself if you're not out of time um, mm -hmm. to 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 do it. As somebody who's like not, um, you know, you know, the lawyers they're all going to lose their licenses if they actually aggressively, um, you know, pursue you, pursue for you. But um, mm -hmm. you do it yourself. Yeah, you you can you can do it yourself. You you don't. Uh, yeah, but it means I gotta come back. I gotta do it. 
And, and yeah, you Charlie wouldn't have to wouldn't come have, back that I, often, though. And, and also, they have video conferencing, so you'd be able to be in Spain and mm. video do it video conference-wise. Ah, ah, that's an interesting concept. Yeah. That's an interesting concept, too. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm out of time or not. I think that the last touch was nine, was almost three years ago now. And, and I think they always go on what the last touch was. <laughs> uh, maybe, yes, I should yes. make, maybe I should make last touch again and uh, and see what's going on. I tried to make that public. No one even cared. And I could try to tell people what this company does, you know, because I watched, we started together. Again, I'm in, into the Internet, the infrastructure, all the stuff. So this guy started out his big I, ISP at the same time I was needed big a big pipe for video. This is 1995. So we started together. And like when I started, it was like, oh, cool. And I had the first ISDN, then the first T1. Then I had the first You had the uh, first C T1? Yeah, yeah. And then I had an OC3. I had a nightclub in, in the Lower East Side with an OC3 in it. People would come in and see this huge box in my basement. And they'd go, what the hell is that? i go, well, that's my modem. <laughs> oh, come on, I would have a, Come yeah, back. Yeah, I had a... I'd have a thousand people watching my broadcasts out of all over the world. The Swedes were my biggest fan watching hip hop on Sundays. Wow. And, and it was like, and I had all the best uh, groups coming down from the Bronx and uh, Lower East Side. I mean, all the cultural stuff. And I have all the stuff on digital tape. So, and all the stuff was online. So, and I, I had, I was making money. I was only four hundred dollars a month short of being in the black. I had a fifty-one million dollar business plan that was in in place. And it went down in those buildings that day. So my it, 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 matter of fact, the guy's uh, the guy's father who wrote the business plan had an office in that building. He got out alive, but his son works camera for uh, for WIC. What's WIC? It's not, he's in Brooklyn on the on public access TV, I think. And he's with that guy Roberts, Mark Roberts. Oh, does he have? Is oh the debunker guy? Yeah, he's he's pretty yeah, annoying he, actually. But yeah, you, he's very know? annoying. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's again, it's like when you got your camera guys down at your public access, you know what it's like. These guys are there to do camera, and they're not, they're, I don't know if he's interested in that stuff. His father is an ex-military guy, but they were all MBAs, and they wrote my my business plan. It cost almost $40,000 to put the business plan together. Yeah, but so, isn't, that, isn't that the kind of power that, or, or at least the steps that get you to the kind of power to get that 42% that uh, energized, and, and the yeah. displaced, he said displaced. No, they just have to be displaced. Then enough people will be energized, you see, because you need the 7%, 7 to go after it. 7% of the people rise because 42%, everyone knows somebody who's in the goddamn streets. It's been screwed over, and it's like the government's just sucking everyone dry more and selling out everything. And we do, you know, they realize that we're communist and that. Uh, and not not uh, an independent republic anymore. So uh, then enough people will actually stand up and go. It doesn't need 42 percent of the population to go, although that would be pretty impressive. But it does need a, a you know it needs a million to five million people would overpower Washington D.C. where you could take the country back. And like you just take it back. You don't have to have any fighting because you're just there. You do not leave. These people are mad. They're gonna be got no place to go home. There's no more home. You screwed everything. We don't have jobs. We don't have money. So what the hell are you gonna do? You either cry in your face, or you go change your government because your government did screw you. They took your money, made it worthless. They, they, it wasn't you that screwed you. You were trying to work. You're trying to do stuff, but they screwed your money and they. The, the bank, it's like the ridiculous, you're going to give up, nationalize the debt and privatize the profit. <laughs> it's say, ridiculous. Say, say, Rick, we got a call right now from uh, from Peggy Carter. Do you know her? She's, she's, yeah, yeah. She's, um, Peggy, she, he's talking about um, how you need 42% of people that are displaced in order to cause a change. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I'm not sure how well I'm going to you know, be received over the phone because I'm on the street and there's a lot of noise. I'm on my scooter, actually. Okay, well, maybe some other time we can get a show. I'll post this. It's been a very interesting interview that I've I had. I did with hear what Rick said, and uh, I found it interesting, and I've always respected uh, Rick's intelligence and his point of view, so uh, my uh, best regards. And also, hey, you really look like uh, Bugsy Siegel, but you know what? 
he was very handsome, so that's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> no, I saw that picture of Bugsy. I was like, wow, I, I do look like that. And I go, if I had, if I was his nephew, I wouldn't have to deal with these idiots. I would make two phone calls and there wouldn't be idiots. <laughs> so he basically like, killed the guy. <laughs> he was killed by the mom himself, so, you know, what does that say? Right. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye for now. Okay, bye. Say, Rick, we're out of tape anyway. Uh, yeah, he was a dapper guy, man, but it's like, it's like, wow, and I go like, wow, if only I was, and they're only doing that because like, oh, he's a Jew and a mafia Jew, because see, Bugsy Siegel, Rick Siegel, oh, it's the same, they're both Jewish too, oh my God, no wonder they hate Sophia. <laughs> All right, well, well, I really want to thank you for joining me farther down the rabbit hole. This has been an episode with Rick Siegel, who's been calling in from Spain and just sharing some of his ideas as both an artist and an entrepreneur. He's got uh, on avantentrepreneur.com, which I highly recommend you to go to, and that's what I've been rolling in. So thanks, Rick. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I, that's why I do my financial stuff. And... I, I,